Today, we're going to turn a permanent magnet alternator and supercapacitors into a self-charging machine. We'll start by installing the supercapacitor array. These are 2.7 volts, 500 farad supercapacitors. These capacitors do not have the same electrical storage as the ultra capacitors, but they will do the job. We're going to make two arrays of five capacitors. Each array can hold up the charge up to 13.5 volts. And we're going to solder the arrays into parallel connection. This will give us a sum total of 13.5 volts with almost 210 amps capacity. We're using two 14 gauge residential wiring. The black is positive and the white is negative. This side we have the positive parallel connection to both arrays. And at this end we have the negative connection. Each segment of the connection alternates between negative to positive, negative to positive, and negative to positive. And the connection pattern repeats on the other side of the array. This is a tiny but mighty 12 volt DC motor. With no load, it can spin up to 6000 RPM. And it can handle up to 128 amps. This is a 12 volt permanent magnet alternator for tractors. It's supposed to come with 12 volt DC internal regulator. But it does not. Oh yeah, I pulled it apart and checked. There was no internal regulator on the cap. And there's nothing behind the stator coil besides the wiring connections. And I have a plan for the 12 volt regulator substitution. This is a full bridge 300 amps rectifier. This rectify is an overkill for this project, but it will do the trick. And let's start to put all the pieces together. Here's an overview of the system. The alternator goes to the rectifier. It changes from AC to DC power. And the DC power goes to charge the capacitors. 
the negative goes here and the positive goes here. And this red wire is for the starter battery. And this black wire goes to the switch, which controls the positive side of the motor. And the negative side of the motor goes back to the negative side of the terminal. The initial reading for the supercapacitors came out to be 10.6 millivolts. Let's hook up the starter battery and fire it up. The voltage drop came out to be 11.65 volts. The alternator puts out about 4.4 amps, which is within the ballpark number of the alternator datasheet with the RPM under 2000. And here we got a reading of 1843 RPM. And here's a top view of the self-charging system. The bottom view does not look too interesting except there's a bunch of woodpecker holes from my previous experiments. <laughs> I've connected a 200 watts inverter with a 15 watts light bulb, and the system has no issue handling the small load. The 200 watts inverter is connected to the DC output source of the rectifier. And we're going to connect two more light bulbs. These are LED light bulbs. They don't use much power. Each light bulb consumes 15 watts. This is a 120 volts output, so I'm trying to handle this as careful as I could. And these quick connector, let me tell you, they are amazing. They are safe and very easy to use. And I can add additional connection live just like that. With 45 watts being consumed, this self-charging system has no issue with the load. And again, the inverter is connected to the DC output of the rectifier. And there's nothing interesting to look at down here. Let's take a shot around the system so you can hear how the system performs without any editing.
Okay, let's take the load test to another level. I'm connecting the cables for the 750 watts inverter. And again, the connection goes to the DC output of the rectifier. And the clamps go back to the supercapacitors for recharging. As you can see, they still have lots of sparks left. Let's reconnect the starter battery and we're ready for the new load test. And the system does not appear to have any issue with the 750 watts inverter connected to it. The inverter reading is a little off. It should read around 45 watts for the three light bulbs. And I still see no issue with the system when I turn the load on and off. Okay, let's take the load test to another level. We're going to leave the three light bulbs connected plus a 5.5 amps 120 volt drill. That was interesting test, it had no issue with the drill. Here I have homemade welding cable connections. We're gonna use the welding cables and make a few sparks. These supercapacitors do not have enough charge for a welding project. We are just gonna test to see how much amperage they can push out. And wow, they push out 209.3 amps. And the juice runs out quickly without the alternator recharging the super capacitors. Well, if you made it this far, you are a mighty legend. Please don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. And thank you for watching.